Hello, Nahum Seccom. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, attending my talk. Thanks to Naham Sec for putting on this conference and inviting me to present here. Uh, the title of my talk is Bug Bounty Platforms, Not Just for Bug Hunting Anymore. So a little about myself. I'm Philip Wiley. I'm an offensive cybersecurity instructor at i &E. I'm a pen tester and red team operator with nine years of experience. I uh, got my start as a sysadmin, moved into network security, application security, and then into uh, pen testing. And I've been in IT and security for a little over 23 years. I'm an adjunct instructor at Dallas College teaching ethical hacking. This is where I got my uh, teaching start. I've been teaching there for a little over three years. I started the Pwn School Project, which is an education-based meetup started out teaching offensive security techniques and then moved into other areas since there is the need for uh, that education for people trying to get started into the field. I'm a co-author of the book, The Pentester Blueprint, and this is a book on starting as a career as an ethical hacker. And this is based on my classroom lecture that became a conference talk that eventually became a book. I'm an advocate for hacking is not a crime. Uh, our mission there is we're trying to get the negative connotation away from hacker, that skill set is not only used for bad, it's used for a lot of good. And I'm also an ambassador for an Innocent Lies Foundation. And kind of how I got involved in, in bug bounty and got interested in the subject was just from, you know, being a pen tester, I followed people like Jason Haddix and, and he had some really good uh, techniques and things that, that he uses that, that I learned from. So I became a fan of his and just kind of started following bug bounty, following bug crowd hacker one. And then uh bug bug crowd back in 2018 started their ambassador program. And I'd been telling my students, you know, one of the ways to get experience as a pen tester is to do bug bounties because you're getting to do pen tests or, you know, vulnerability assessments against production environments. So you'll be able to get the experience you know, that you would in pen testing that is very helpful in getting a job as a pen tester. So I became an ambassador so I could learn more about bug bounty. It was a way for me to mentor and teach, help others get started in bug bounties. So that's kind of where, where I got started and actually was the, the first ever ambassador of the year, which was awarded in 2019 for my efforts at, at bug crowd. So that's what really got me interested in space. And I and went on to learn about, you know, some other really cool people like Naham Sek, Stoke, uh, and some other really cool uh, bug hunters out there. So what is pen testing? Pen testing is assessing security from an adversarial perspective. So you're going in attacking like a, like a cyber criminal would do because this is the, one of the better ways to test security. If you're just running a vulnerability scanner, there's things that you can miss. So there's a good chance that you're going to miss some some vulnerabilities there and, and things that are exploitable or higher risk. You know, if you're able to exploit a certain level of access to a system, you know, if you're on as a, a low level user, can you elevate your privileges? Can you do lateral movement? So you really don't know that unless you test it the same way a malicious hacker or cyber criminal would do. And so this is assessing security from the adversarial perspective and you're paid per project. So I emphasize that because we're going to talk about the differences between the two of pen testing and bug bounty. So these pen testing skills or offensive security skills are helpful in other areas like application security. This is what got me interested in pen testing. SOC analysts. So SOC analysts are monitoring for malicious traffic. So be able to detect Malicious traffic, understanding the different type of attacks will make you better as a SOC analyst. Digital forensics and incident response, investigating breaches, investigating malicious traffic or activity is going to make you a better investigator. And security operations, so your firewall administrators, uh, your SIEM administrators, IPS, all those, you know, be able to understand that malicious traffic, the, that that hacker mindset is going to make you a better, better defender. So what is bug bounty? You know, there is, there are some similarities and that's really why I did this talk today to kind of show you how you could use these skills to become a pen tester. 
if that's where you decide to go with your career. So same as pen testing, this is assessing security from an adversarial perspective. This time you're paid per vulnerability instead of per project. And this is also recur re referred to as crowdsource. So sometimes you hear bug crowds or bug bounties referred to as crowdsource pen testing. And so this means you've got like a number of people, not just one person performing a test. So this could be, you know, just theoretically, this could be anywhere from in the tens to the hundreds of people testing an app. And so the, the strength of that is that you're getting, you know, a lot more opinions, a lot more hours. When you figure out the amount of hours of work that someone's putting in to test compared to an individual, that's a lot more, a lot more human hours put in. And so a lot more chance to find vulnerabilities. And sometimes, you know, this is a good add on along with a pen test too. And we'll describe something here in these next few slides on how, how that's kind of done by some of these bug bounty companies. So there are some similarities and differences between these two. So uh, pen testing compared to bug bounty. So as we mentioned before, pen testing is paid per project while bug bounties are paid per bug or vulnerability. So you have individual pen testers, sometimes a team, could be a, typically a small team if there's a team, compared to crowdsource security assessments using multiple uh, bug hunters, also known as security researchers. So this could be any number of people. This could be a small group to, you know, just having some experience with some live hacking events that bug crowd puts on their bug bashes. You know, man, they probably had, I've heard, close to maybe a hundred people show up for these bug bounties. And, you know, normally a bug bounty could have, you know, possibly a thousand people working on it. So the opportunity to find bugs are more. And then plus if you get to work in one of those live hacking events, like hacker one does or bug crowd, you're able to work with other people and learn. So there's good opportunities there. And I think a lot, you know, it's, it gives you the opportunity to, you know, some people, you know, that are experienced out there are willing to help with help and, uh, and teach you along the way. So these are, these are good opportunities. And so pen testing experience from bug bounty. And so one of the things I want to share here too, as far as getting this experience, how helpful this is, you know, one of the things I'd share with my students, people I mentor, people asking for advice, uh, you know, they ask how, you know, you know, to get experience in bug bounties, I mean, get experience in pen testing. And the thing I share is, uh, you know, how you can use this, this, this bug bounty experience. And that is helpful because uh, I was talking to a hiring manager of a pen testing firm over the summer last year. And he was telling me how it was easier to find web app pen testers because of bug bounty. There's, you know, there's bug bounties that, that are IOT related, could be hardware related, car hacking type of bug bounties. But more commonly, there's a lot of web app pen testing or web application bug bounties. So this gives you experience. So that kind of uh, was really good to hear. It validated what I believe. So, you know, give me a little bit of evidence that this is actually the case. You know, you, in theory, it makes sense that you're going, you're getting experience would be helpful. But when you hear from someone that's hiring pen testers, that's really, really good to hear. Especially, you know, to be able to share with people trying to get into it, to let them know this is the, this is what you do. So pen testing through bug bounty platforms. So this is an option here, uh, like bug crowd and hacker one, they also perform pen tests. And so while I was an ambassador for, for bug crowd, I actually did one of their next gen pen tests, one of their very first ones. And their next gen pen test was basically a pen test along with a bug bounty going along simultaneously. So, you know, you have a researcher would go through, perform a pen test while you have other people participating in that bug bounty. And so um, to get invited to these, you know, like a bug crowd, you would sign up, let them see your skills and you get the opportunity to do that. But a lot of this is going to take, you know, as you get experience. So if you're someone coming in to one of these bug bounty platforms, you don't have the pen, test, pen testing experience yet. As you get experience, you're finding bugs, showing success and putting time on the platform, then you'll get invited to do things like these, these penetration tests. And so there's, you know, that's a good way to learn and you in with the, the doing the way I know the way bug crowd does it, you're, you're getting paid for bugs as well as for the pen test. So it's not only getting paid per vulnerability, it's also getting 
paid to perform the pen test. And so there's some other companies that that they're crowdsourced pen testing similar to a bug bounty. And uh, like Synac, they still have the bug bounty piece to it where people are looking for individual bug bug bounties. But there's also two people that are performing pen tests. Then Cobalt, they started out as a pen test company, but they went to pen testing as a service model. So this means that, you know, companies are, are paying them to do pen tests. And what happens is the researchers or their, their penetration testers perform a pen test. So you're getting paid for an individual pen test. And then in Synac, you know, you're performing pen tests with them. But, you know, the interesting thing between like bug bounty, starting out with bug bounty, it's a little bit easier to get in. You apply, you start participating. But with these platforms like Cobalt and Synac, you have to go through an interview process. There's some technical challenges that there may be like a vulnerable VM or a CTF type challenge that you have to be successful in and, and get past the interview to, to be able to join. So uh, those are some options there to kind of ex expand past bug bounty or if you have a little bit of bug bounty experience and that's a way to pivot more into the pen testing side of things. And so one of the things, you know, if you get in and you don't make it first try on these interviews with that, keep practicing and you'll get that experience and you'll get to move on. And as you get that experience on those other platforms, you can have the opportunity to, to do pen tests with them. And so how does the bug bounty experience help? So where, how the bug bounty experience helps out is when you're performing a pen test, you're learning, you know, how to do the steps of a pen test. You're learning how to test for vulnerabilities and a really good place to, to look for those is, is the OWASP top 10. Learn the OWASP top 10 because this is gonna help you during interviews. If you're interviewing for a pen test job, whether it's web application pen testing or not, those are the vulnerabilities you typically get asked questions about. So know the different types of SQL injection, the different types of cross-site scripting, how to remediate those vulnerabilities. And so as you read the OWASP top 10, you understand those vulnerabilities a little bit more and really learn to realize the risk. So not only do you find these vulnerabilities, it's important to understand the risks and so that way you can explain how to remediate and understand the severity. So when you're working with someone on a pen test or you're doing a bug bounty, you're able to share, you know, this is why this is a risk and build explain that. So going through that process is gonna help you on the interviews as well as the technical skills that you're gaining. So when you go in to, you know, to interview for a pen testing job, or if you're trying to interview to get on with Synac or uh, Cobalt, you're able to perform these technical challenges, these CTF or vulnerable VM, VMs they give you or vulnerable environments that you perform pen tests against, you're able to perform those based on what you've learned. During your technical interviews, you're able to describe how you use different methodologies and how you look for different types of vulnerabilities and explain how to use the different tools. So you, these are the same things they're gonna ask you on a technical interview. So you're getting that experience. And to go back to like the bug bounty platforms and like Cobalt and Synac, you can get in those platforms a little less experience. And so they're, you know, if you're going to try for like, you know, some of these really well-known uh, pen testing firms, you're gonna need, they're usually gonna require a certain amount of experience, sometimes certifications, and so it's a little easier to get into some of these platforms, not saying to do the work is easy, but they're a little more friendlier because they, you know, the crowdsource model requires a lot of researchers. So they're going, they're constantly wanting to bring people on, you know, like uh, Hacker One has some great learning content. They're Hacker One on One. Also like Bug Crowd University, they're wanting to educate people to get them on the platforms. So they're going to be more, friendly towards bringing people on compared to some of these other pen testing companies. They're going to be more particular and it's going to be a little more difficult to get in. So this is a good way to get experience. So, you know, getting the experience, doing the interview, learning the different tools to be able to perform the pen test. So this is what, what's needed to get in. So this is one of the reasons I recommend doing bug bounties. Also things like hack the box, try hack me are good ways to get experience doing CTFs. So all this stuff helps as you gain the experience through these different things is to help you on your path to becoming a pen tester. And if you enjoy, you know, doing uh, bug bounties, then you can still do both. I know a lot of people that are pen testers that, that do bug bounty part-time. 
And so that's a possibility. You can make some extra money of that, and you're also sharpening your skills. So if you're working somewhere as a pen tester and you're not getting much web app pen testing experience, then if you're doing bug bounty, you're going to be able to get more experience. Maybe you'll get some IoT experience expanded to some other areas. And so one of the things about being a pen tester in, or a security researcher or bug hunter is you're constantly having to learn. And so this gives you a way to try new things and get that experience. So uh, thank you for attending my talk. Thanks again to, to Nahamsek for putting on this conference. I appreciate everything you do for the community. And feel free to contact me and reach out to me. Um, here's my Twitter handle and my LinkedIn connection. So I'm always happy to answer any DMs or, or messages on LinkedIn. I do a lot of mentoring and I'm always happy to help people out. So um, hope to connect with you and thanks again.